Have you ever had a YouTube channel and you're like made this commitment that on the first of every single month that you're going to post like a Q&A, you know, video and just answer people's questions, respond to comments and just to interact with the community. And then on 11.55 p.m. of the last day of the month when the video is due the next month, you realize to yourself, holy crap, I haven't done that video. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but primarily I blame some testing and some LEDs. It's a new obsession. Let me explain. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Jason Bites back absolutely last moment, episode numero L730. Yes, I'm going to try to speed through this. Also, I'm going to be doing a project at the same time and kind of explaining what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And it's actually not that complicated. I'm just really addicted to Home Assistant and it's hard to set it down. And I forgot that it's the end of the month. And yes, I know my kitchen is disgusting. Don't judge me. Ah, what are you going to just say in the beginning of this? Uh, let's say uh, awesome uh, patrons. You guys are members of the YouTube channel. This is a disaster of a channel, so I don't know why you're still there, but you are. So I do appreciate you if I remember, which I will. I always do. Names at the end of this video. Uh, this is definitely going to be a quick edit. I, I wrote down the questions, so there's going to be some summarization in there because, yeah, a hurry. That's what I'm in. Do you know what this is, right? This is an aluminum thing. This has actually already been cut once. This is an aluminum LED channel. That's probably not the official name. Maybe I'll try to link it in the description, but this is used to install lights, LEDs, in a more professional manner. It also comes with diffusers, which is this, right? Makes it look better. So <clears throat> now you might be thinking to yourself, the lights, right? This stuff looks absolutely stupid and I agree, but Part of my latest Home Assistant, just rabbit hole part, it's all going in layers, okay? I'm like an onion, you just gotta dissect it in layers. Anyway, my most recent step is to jumping into motion sensors and how I want to incorporate it into my system. And I put these up here to kind of test this. Did they get brighter? I don't, they should have got brighter, anyways. Motion sensors, how do I want to use them? I have animals, cats specifically, a cat that likes to roam, turn on lights. So if I have it turn on main lights, like my uh, main kitchen light or whatever, the cat's just gonna turn it on, especially in the middle of the night when it's just roaming around and doing cat things. So I wanna experiment with little LED accent lights that maybe whenever I do this and it gets thing, it goes brighter and it's not as violent as turning on the entire light for whatever room. Whatever though, right? That's actually not the primary reason why you're here. Anyways, Jason Bites back, episode numero 760, uh, I cliff noted it, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first question before I do the first step of this and explain this is from Dre Black. He said, Crestron is definitely not a no-name brand. Well, Mr. Dre, you are absolutely right. I actually made that joke because it was given to me. I knew it was stupid expensive and I wanted to downplay it. Fact of the matter is Crestron is heavily known in the AV community, especially on like a commercial scale, but they are also super expensive because usually like people with millions and billions of dollars are the ones using it. So I got it donated to me. However, you can go to eBay and you can get them rather cheap. Like the old versions because companies upgrade, Usually you can find those old versions sold on eBay for considerably cheaper than what they go for brand new. I just like to kind of joke around sometimes when I install something absolutely stupidly priced just for the heck of it. And that's it. So I made this very crude markup, like just measuring like how long those things are as far as like what can actually fit underneath that, right? With these little uh, L, V angle, whatever. So I measured out each single one. That way I can go through and I can cut and that way I can have the diffuser, I can cut it and I can stick it underneath there and it would be fancy diffused and at an angle. So step one is cutting down the original, like the underneath the cabinets. That's where I'm starting, cutting those down to size. That way I can just get the mounting process thing going. 22, 16, seven inch and 13 inch. Worst mark ever. Let's just try that again. Second question is from Thomas. Okay, he had a lot of words. So uh, one of them, they said, awesome if you explain the scripts for Crestron. 
th this is on the touch panel. There were no scripts. So the screen that I got, basically all I had to do was log into the web UI, use a generic like password, and then I could just tell it to go to a website. That way, every time it booted up, it just went to the same website, which just happens to be the local home assistant control board. Uh, I made one specifically for the hallway, but that's really as simple as it was. And that's the thing I like about Crestron. Some people are like, just use, you know, Android or whatever, just pads, like little devices that have batteries and other things, more complicated, harder to maintain. The Crestron thing, I manage it remotely, all it does, get my lights, get my lights. All it does is load a website. That's it. Not really a lot of scripts. Unless of course you're talking about the RGB thing, which that is a whole different subject. So now that I got all of these cut, these go right underneath here. Look at this. Uh, so you see that, right? They're gonna go right, right underneath there. And then they're gonna go at an angle and then they're gonna be diffused, which will be nice. So it won't be super crazy. This stuff comes with really super easy mounting stuff and screws. So I'm gonna use this. Hopefully, hopefully that'll, yeah, should fit. So just like mount this right. I'm looking at the. Whoa, what did, I broke it. Wow. All right, note to self. Screws are cheap. Probably ain't amazingly better, but they're probably better than these crappy things. Like, honestly, you can't even go into wood. Next question is from Roguru. He said, important question, what shampoo do you use? I actually don't use shampoo. You see, once every three days, I actually marinate my hair in toothpaste for three hours. There's a lot of benefits to this. You should look it up. And then we got Who Channel, a lot of words and text. He says, I prefer my house to react to my actions rather than me instructing it, which is completely fair. When it comes to Home Assistant, there's like, you know, the automations, the scripts, all that other stuff. A lot of people are totally into that and they don't even worry about the, the dashboard like I'm doing. I've gotten super obsessed with the dashboards because I like having the clicking control and now I'm getting like a little bit into automations, hence the LED projects. Don't want to turn on the big lights, maybe a little LEDs, they fade just a little bit, you know, motion, all of that stuff. But the problem I found is how do you predict an unpredictable world, especially myself? I don't always know what my routine is. Sometimes that changes. That's why I like the ability to control it. Also, I can pull it up in the app and I can pull it up on the website and I can just control everything with one single page and it's all just really easy to click on it, see what's going on and change it. Whether that's on my computer or on a little monitor entering the house. So I totally get where you're coming from, but personally, I just kind of think that you need a little bit of both. Got all of these installed. It just took a lot better screws and I should be, yeah. Should be okay. Okay, I was just making sure that it was gonna fit right, and then I snapped it in. You can kind of see, right, whatever, right there. Now it's like, how do you get it out, so. Now those lights I had strung up there was just the fourth iteration of just testing them out to see if I liked them. I actually ended up getting these. These are super bright. They're RGB CW. I have a Zigbee controller. Uh, they do take six wires, and these are actually what I'm going to use for not only the kitchen stuff, but also my little idea for landscape lighting. No joke though, I tested, the, I mean, they are super bright. These things are just amazing. I've already ordered more, and they have a little sticky thing, and you can cut them like every two or three inches. So, super nice. The only problem is, I ordered more cable, so I could run this like legit, but I don't have it yet. So, I can't really actually do all of this just yet because I'm still waiting on supplies. I actually bought a power supply. So this is a uh, part of a, another bigger project. Uh, I'll explain more. This is the Zigbee controller. I've cut it to length and now I'm gonna plug it in and give you a demonstration. Which I just realized since I use my phone to control it, I can't really show the switching of the colors. You get the idea. There you go. So stick that to that. And then I will have to solder on wires to connect the next set. The next question is from Stink. He said, I agree with the majority. ESP Home is the start. ESP 8266, ESP 32. Yes. So I actually posted this video where I'm like, I cannot figure out these little ESP boards, the ones that you kind of like hook up and program yourself. I wanted to get it connected. I had Zigbee, I had Wi-Fi. I just could not get it going. I just sucked but not only thanks to people in the comment section but also people on discord y'all helped me and esp home was a solution uh i figured out the trick 
was that I really needed to plug the device into the server itself that was running Home Assistant rather than trying to configure it on my computer and then transfer it or whatever. So I was taking that first step wrong, but now I have a bunch of those boards and they are pretty cool. I haven't like gotten too deep into what I can do as far as using them for custom things, aside from playing around with motion sensors, humidity, stuff like that. But now that I've looked at them, now that I got them working, now that I have them connected both with Wi-Fi's and the Zigbee's, including that XB one, which isn't the same type, but still got that working as well. Now that I have all that connected, it like opened up the world and it's super awesome. And I, I put that down because again, another rabbit hole and I, uh, I was like, oh, I'm gonna wait. So this is the cable I found. And this is the idea. If I wanna run it over there, I can just drill a hole and I can push these wire through it. So all I have to do is just measure out how long the wire should be and then cut it. And what really sucks is I can only solder half of these up here. The rest of them, I have to drill the holes, run the wires and then solder them up there. So that's interesting. Ooh, look at that. Not too bad. I, I gotta, yeah. Not too bad. Next question is from Duncan. He said, lots of words. Emporia View flashed with ESP Home, local only. That is something I really want to do that. Not going to lie. The Emporia View has been super awesome, but it is cloud dependent and a lot of things just fall out, especially when you're constantly calling that for your home assistant. It just, it, it's not very reliable. So flashing it with ESP Home, being able to pull all of those sensors locally and then just having home assistant keep track of all of that, that is on my to-do list codliness blah 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 i said made all the power sockets in my house zigbee i have no more issues went through this whole thing trying to find a way to solve my issues with my zigbee network and really what it came down to was light bulbs see i got these little soil sensors and i put light bulbs on all the fixtures outside that are all uh phillips hue zigbee so now that combined with all the other random stuff my network is pretty solid and I don't have any issues with it. So yeah, I started off like not understanding or really just not having all the stuff, experimenting with different brands. And now I just have a very solid network that, you know, can reach all the reaches of my lawn, my house, etc. So now it's pretty good. Also the Acara brand, they don't roam very well with other non car devices and not having an Acara hub. So I learned that too. Oh, uh, this is taking way longer. It's like 2.30 already. I think I have everything I need. I can run this through. I could drill some holes and I might be able to get part of this done. And then whenever I get more wiring, <laughs> I can get the rest of it done. Oh, kind of a weird way to do it, but drill the hole. Got that. Um, put it in the in the cupboard here or the cabinet. And then I'm going to do that. And then that'll be the first one, right? And then the second one. And then the third one. Upset. Yeah. Had a little mix up with the wires, but uh, there's one, two, and that's the mix up, three. Now, what I did is I just kind of soldered them together. I'm gonna fix that later, but literally it's 320. I need, I have to get up for work in like four hours. All right, first power on test. All right, sweet, there we go. That is all the RGBs just turned on. It's not like the white white, but that is, uh, that kind of gives you an idea. That is on, that's on full blast. It's on the warmer setting, but it's on full blast. And uh, I mean, that lights up a lot. Once I get that one hooked up, holy bananas, that's, that's a light. That, uh, once I get them up there too, yeah, that's that's a light. And that is on 1% on a like a light orange because it was less light than... Okay, you know what? Maybe it's a lot of lights. <laughs> I got so much more to do. Damn, that's bright. Well, there you have it. That is uh, me installing those lights, uh, at least part of them. I really just wanted to get it going. And the last one... Uh, it was from Truly Insane One. He said, battery powered and Plasti Dip. This is on the soil sensors. Uh, how do you change the battery? Well, it's Plasti Dip. You can just scrub it off. Like you use your fingernail. And that's literally what I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna scrub it off and then I'm gonna replace the battery and put more Plasti Dip on. So guys, that's it. That's Jason Bites back up with episode number 7363, 73. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> Hopefully you like this different style. Like and subscribe below and have yourself a nice day.